emotional, understated drama about love, life, and choices. Let's talk about past lives. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm here to talk to you about past lives. It's released in limited markets on June 2nd, 2023. It's coming to wider release and more importantly, the DC area on June 9th, 2023. It's is a new drama being distributed by A24 about a woman who immigrated twice and is now in America and has reconnected with a childhood friend at various stops along the way and kind of the way that their, I guess, relationship has developed and the way that their lives have diverged and grown together. It is a beautiful film. It is a wonderful film. It is really understated, but oh, so emotional. Uh, my hot take, as you can probably tell, is I think you should watch it. It is just a wonderful movie. It's a beautiful story about love, choice, ambition, and the kind of like what ifs that life can throw you, the, the those like roads not taken, things of that nature. But I think unlike most movies in this genre, this one just feels very authentic, very emotional, very real. I loved the kind of way the characters develop. I loved the ending. I think a lot of the reason that this film feels so kind of realistic is because it is sort of based on the writer-director Celine Song's own story and kind of her own experiences that she had, which gives an air of authenticity to this overall story, but then also just makes the film that much more relatable. So I'm going to tell you a little more about the film. A few things I liked. There really wasn't anything I didn't like, so I will kind of skip that part. And I'm also going to go briefly into the ending just because I love the ending. I love the way that it developed. I love the way that this film ends. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section if you don't want to know what happens in this film. I would turn it off when I get there. But before that, I will keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler free. You don't have to worry about it. And I'll let you know when I get to those spoilers. So, Past Lives follows the main character of Na Young, who, when she was 12, immigrated with her family to Canada. And when she moved to Canada, she took a new, uh, you know, I guess, Western name of Nora. And then later, she also immigrated again to New York. And that is where she was living in, in, in like the present time. Now, when she was in Korea, when she first immigrated, she was very close to this young boy named Hae Sung. Uh, they were, it was cute. It was like a childhood, you know, romance, childhood, like, crush. It was a, a fun, like, young, sweetheart kind of relationship that was ripped apart when she left Korea. And throughout her life at various intersections, her and Sung kind of reconnect for brief glimpses. And the way that their kind of friendship develops and the way that their lives kind of both diverge and converge throughout this time is really kind of the main story of this film. And how do those lives develop? How do they relate to each other? Well, you have to watch the film to find out. So, things I liked about this movie. The first, I love the writing. It is such a well-written film. It is so kind of natural and beautifully written. Uh, and I really love kind of the way that the characters, their, their, their relationship develops, right? Like, they go on very long hiatuses without talking to each other. And then when they kind of reconnect, I love the way that this film kind of accurately depicts kind of the, the awkwardness that might happen, the like slow comfort that they slide into. I love the way that these characters uh, interact with each other and the way that this film is like written. It just feels so authentic. And it's important in a film like this because there really is very little about this other than like the writing and the characters and the situations that happen. So... It is really good that all of that is so well done. The second thing I love, this is kind of a surprise to me, but it's something that really stuck out to me, is the music. It has a really great musical soundtrack, especially when Nora's character gets to New York. There's this like nice, smooth jazz soundtrack that plays over a lot of it that really helped to kind of like set the stage for her life, her like modern life, her very different life than what she had in Korea. And I love the way that they use the music to set the mood and kind of like really help to to show how different these two characters lives had had become the third thing i loved is the slow pace this is a film that doesn't take anything too fast it, it really kind of takes its time telling the story letting you kind of see these characters letting you see them interact letting you see their relationship grow ebb and flow all of that it really is a beautiful film that doesn't rush anything and i love that i love the way that it really lets you kind of get a feel of these characters get a sense of like what their interests are where, where they stand in their in their lives and also really just kind of get comfortable with how they are interacting this film is all about the relationships and i love that the film doesn't rush any of it it really kind of takes its time and it doesn't ever feel long it is not a super long movie it's about 106 minutes but you are just enjoying the time that you get to spend with them the fourth thing i loved is the cinematography uh, I really like the way that this film is shot. There are so many great shots that help let you like get to know the characters. The film, the, the, the camera is really good about like 
helping to establish the awkwardness of some of the situations. There are some really wonderful shots where it'll take its time and not rush the shot and really kind of like let the audience feel how uncomfortable some of these situations are. And it's not like awkward, like tension comfortable. It is like, it is a tension where you've got people who are like, you've seen each other after a very long time and like not knowing what to talk about because it's been so long and kind of like that initial awkwardness of a, of a friendship that is being redeveloped or, or a, of a, of things that are like unspoken and the camera work really kind of helps with that. I also love that there's a lot of very close up shots that lets you see the characters and see their expressions because that is really kind of the meat of this film is, is these characters and how they're interacting and how they are like seeing each other and, and the emotions that they have with each other and this film does a really great job of, of highlighting that and let the audience really get a familiarity for who these people are and that all leads to kind of the fifth thing i liked which probably should have been the first thing i liked. i love the characters i love the two main characters well actually there's there's kind of three main characters and i actually like them all like I'll, the three main characters are um hey song nora and this person arthur and each of them is very genuine and complex and the way that they all interact during this film is just fantastic it's a testament to the acting it's a testament to the writing it's a testament to the like the reality that this film is based in that the characters feel so genuine and that i love getting to know each of them and each of their quirks and interests and desires it is just a wonderful set of characters to get to know and the last thing i loved is i love the ending i loved how it felt just kind of so right and so emotionally balanced it you kind of tidy your heartstrings but also felt like a very realistic end and like like i said in the hot take i feel like this movie tackles a genre that in hollywood would be done very differently than the way that this film ended and the way that this film ended felt right it felt perfect it felt like the the correct call given all of the influences and emotions that were happening it felt so authentic and i really love that i love the way that this movie ended and i love the way that the kind of the story developed to that ending like i said things i didn't love there really wasn't anything this film is really really good it definitely is something you should check out so I'm going to go into the ending now. If you don't want to know what happens in this film, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. Uh, just know that Past Lives is getting a wider release, including in D.C. on June 9th, 2023. So check it out if it's nearby. Check it out if it's in your area. It is definitely a treat and definitely something you will want to experience. So I'm going to get into the ending. Like I said, there will be spoilers. So Past Lives really has kind of like three main sequences in it. You've got the initial sequence. We've got Na Young and Hae Sung. They are in Korea. They're kids. They're like, you know, growing up and kind of they have like a crush, like a sweetheart kind of relationship. They go on like one date it is a cute like kid date where they play in the park. And then Na Young leaves abruptly to go to Canada with her family. Her parents, I think they want to move for other opportunities or just to kind of like give their kids a different culture to grow up in. I'm not, it doesn't really say why they moved, but they end up moving to Canada. And that is when these two kids like say a very quick goodbye and then that chapter in their life is over now you don't get a ton of time in canada because the next time we meet nora who which is now her like western name she is in new york and she is studying writing at some university i don't think she ever says which university is but she is studying writing and randomly her and Sung reconnect Sung is like kind of looking for her he's posting on uh her dad who is a movie director is like movie facebook pages saying like hey like i'm trying to get in touch with uh Nai young do you know where she is could be stalkerish but in this movie it ends up being kind of sweet so nora is like talking to a friend and wondering what happened and she does a google search and finds out that you know he is posting on the facebook pages so she decides to reach out to him to reconnect and after some a few messages where you get to kind of see where they are she so she is in New York as a writer. He is in Korea studying engineering. And they end up starting to like FaceTime each other and start speaking over, uh, you know, video calls. And this is a really kind of fun little development. You get like both the awkwardness of them not seeing each other for so long. So not really knowing what to talk about, but they're both excited to see each other. They both kind of like clearly have fond memories of each other. But you also get the like technical limitations of early internet, like, video calling where they uh there, there's latency issues sometimes the connection's not great sometimes the you know the, the the phrases don't come through well it is a perfect kind of way to show their slow friendship develop but they do develop they do get much closer they seem to facetime a lot they seem to get very close but 
both of them in their lives, they're kind of like stuck in what they're doing. Uh, Nora is working in New York, so she can't really leave. She's got things that she's doing in New York. Uh, hey Sung is in Korea studying. He can't leave. And also he probably can't afford to go to New York at this time anyways. So they are becoming very close and becoming very kind of like relying on each other. But they're never going to see, but they're not going to see each other for a very long time. Now, Nora kind of recognizes this early. And she eventually says like, kind of almost like a come to Jesus moment. Like, look, like you're not going to be able to come see me for an, a year and a half. I'm not going to be able to see you until, for a year. Uh, but like right now, all I'm thinking about is find a soul and like, you know, meet up with you. I'm gonna, we have to take a break. Like we have to cut this off for the time being, you know, we'll pick it back up when it's a more realistic time in our lives. A very kind of like responsible adult thing to say. Uh, hey, Sung, I don't think he wants to do this, but he kind of agrees with, to do this. And that's when their lives diverge again. Turns out that shortly after this, Nora goes to like a an artist kind of like retreat area. It's like a kind of a, I don't know, like an like an artist house where people go to like write and develop their art, and that is where she meets this young Jewish writer named Arthur. And Hei Sung is going to Beijing to kind of work on his Mandarin, and there he seems to meet someone kind of just when he is out eating dinner, and it's implied that maybe they start to have a relationship. So, fast forward twelve more years. So now Nora and Arthur are living in New York, and they're married. We find out that Hei Song is living in Korea. I think he's still living with his parents, which I think is is normal for Korean culture. It's not that weird, and it's all apparently it's probably going to become more normal in America as housing prices are getting crazy. Uh, in any event, he's still living with his parents, but he is coming out to New York for a vacation. And you wonder, like, okay, well, why is he coming out to New York? I think we, I think the underlying thought that everyone has is, well, he's coming out to see Nora and just kind of like connect with her, maybe see if there was any sort of spark there. But he's coming out to New York for a vacation. Nora and her husband, Arthur, are living in New York, and she is going to kind of meet up with him when he's out here. And the first few days of Sung's trip to New York are rainy. He seems isolated. He seems like maybe he's not having a great time. But when he finally meets Nora, it's like the first sunny day of his trip. And they finally meet their first time seeing each other in like 24 years. Because even when they were talking before, uh, they were only doing it over FaceTime. So this is their first time seeing each other in person in 24 years it is so wonderfully done because it is so awkward like hey song is kind of an awkward person already he is a very quiet person he like doesn't really speak a ton uh and you can tell that there's a lot of like unspoken thoughts and feelings in this meeting they kind of like just see each other they hug and then they like don't really know what to say it is perfect it was really great and i love how also the camera just kind of like tracks them not saying anything, standing there awkwardly for a very long time. It is a wonderful way to kind of like start this next chapter in their lives. But they're old friends. They spend the day together. They just kind of like catch up. And there's little hints here and there throughout their conversation that let you know that both of them, I think, thought that maybe there was more here than meets the eye. Like uh, Nora says that before she and Arthur got married, they went to Seoul uh, to Korea. And she reached out to him to see uh, if they could meet up. And he didn't respond for some reason. You don't know why. But he didn't respond, and she was like, I really wish that we would have seen each other then. Which I think was maybe her attempt to, like, see if there was a spark there before she kind of, like, pulled the trigger and, like, fully married Arthur. We also found out that Sung and his girlfriend took a break because uh, Sung wasn't sure if they wanted to get married. So he seems to say things like, oh, well, I'm too ordinary for her to marry me. But you also wonder if maybe he, like, didn't want to commit to her because he always had these feelings for uh, Nora. Who knows? We'll find out as this movie progresses. So, after this, after they spend the day together, Nora goes back home to her husband, and this is another wonderful scene, because her husband is, like, you know, at home, playing Xbox, probably just a normal night, but it looks so sad compared to, like, the day that uh, Heisong and uh, Nora had. When she comes back, it feels, like, lonely, it feels empty. I love the way that the scene was. And then her and her husband kind of talk, and her husband, Arthur, is just a wonderful character he is so understanding and he feels so kind of like emotionally intelligent that i loved i love their interaction i love the way that he was portrayed so he kind of like asked some questions about uh hey song and, and things like that and uh the answers are perfectly awkward like she starts talking about hey song and how he's like so korean and 
how he's like Korea Korean, like she has Korean American friends, but he is like Korea Korean, and she feels like she becomes more Korean around him. And then her husband out of the blue asks like if he's attractive, and she like kind of skirts around the issue. Hey, look, Hey Song is an attractive person, and you can tell that Nora thinks he's attractive. The, uh, but then, like I said, he is super emotionally intelligent, so I think he, he can tell that there are like some emotions between his wife and his old like friend, the sweetheart, whatever you want to say. And his and Nora asks Arthur like if he's mad at her, like for for meeting up with him for doing this. And I love his answer because he's like he said he says I don't have the right to be mad. Like he flew thirteen hours to come see you. Like he can't tell his wife not to see her old friend. Um, and then he kind of jokes away that he, he says and then he kind of jokes like it's not like you're gonna run away with him, which was fun, but also kind of like I think that's what everyone was thinking at that moment in this film. So I just love the way that her husband like trusts her and like understands that this is so, like that that he can't. I just love the way that her husband like trusts her and also understands that he like can't tell her not to do this. Like he could try, but Nora's character is one that is very kind of independent and does her own thing and it's like not right for him to tell her not to because this is she clearly has something in here that needs to be worked out and so he is you know both painfully but also lovingly supporting her which i i love i love the way that this was that this was developed now hey son's only there for like one more night and so it seems like the last night he nora and arthur are all going to go out and have like dinner together and and hang out and again, this is another just wonderfully awkward scene. Like, you can definitely tell that there is awkwardness between Sung and Arthur. But they both try to, like, make it work, I guess. Try to, like, be nice to each other. It is really, really well done. Like, they, they A, they have a communicate like, a language barrier. So it's tough for them to communicate. But then also, they, they try to talk a little bit, but there's not a ton for them to talk about. And then during this, like, night out, they end up at a bar and Sung and Nora are talking. They get into this very like deep conversation about uh, this Korean concept called Inyun, which is like essentially almost like, it's, you can think of it like soulmates, like people who have some sort of connection in past lives. And so you could have an instance where you just meet someone for the first time, but you have this like strong connection because of your past lives that you uh, kind of experienced together. And so... Uh, Nora and Sung are talking about this very deep conversation about like, well, what do you think we, we were in our past lives and blah, blah, blah. And Arthur's just kind of like sitting there over the side, like quietly letting his wife and her old friend have this very deep, intimate conversation. And this entire time I was wondering, like, does he speak more Korean than he's laying on? He speaks some Korean. He's learning some Korean to communicate with his wife uh, in kind of her native tongue and probably also her family. But you don't know. You don't know like how much of this is he's picking up. And it gives you this like wonderful sense of kind of empathy and pity for Arthur because he is here supporting his wife, like doing what she needs to do. But he is also kind of definitely a third wheel in this interaction. Later in the night, uh, Nora seems to step out for some reason and Arthur and Haesung are talking. And this is this is one of my like, this is one of the things I really loved. Uh, Haesung like apologizes to Arthur about how like him and Nora were talking for so long. He's like, you know, essentially like, they kind of monopolize the conversation, didn't include him. And he says, you know, well, I'll stop that now. And Arthur, in in his like wonderful understanding way, says, says, like, it's okay, you haven't seen each other in a long time. And Arthur tells Hey Sung that he's really glad he came in New York and it was the right thing to do, which I thought was just a wonderful kind of like grown-up view of relationships and whatnot. Like, even though it was painful for him to see this, like he's happy that. He came here that his wife was able to kind of reconnect with her old friend and kind of like, I don't know, nurture that part of her personality, maybe that Korean part, whatever whatever was missing in her life. Hae-sung was able to feed that in her and, and they were also able to like reconnect and kind of like catch up on all the things that they had missing, which I loved. I loved the way that Arthur kind of like expressed that. So after they all get back from dinner, uh, Nora says that she's going to walk Arthur to his Uber. And I think in everyone's head, you're thinking like, okay, what's going to happen? This is their last like meetup. What are they gonna do? And the and the the camera like helps to emphasize this. So Nora and Hayson walk to the Uber, and it's one long tracking shot as they're walking, and there's no conversation. It's just them walking about a block. It's perfect. It's perfect. The camera just kind of follows them, 
There's no conversation really. Nora eventually asks like, how long until your Uber is like two minutes. And they just kind of stand there looking at each other. And you can feel the like emotion and tension. Like you can cut it with a knife. Like they clearly are contemplating the different choices that they have at this moment. Like what are they going to do? Are they going to like hug? Are they going to kiss? What is going to happen? It seems like it's building. And it seems like they are about to do something. And then the Uber pulls up and Hey Sung sees the Uber. He like hails it down. Uh, they gives her a hug. And then like, and so after, after they hug, when the Uber gets there, Hey Sung asks Nora, like, what if this is a past life? What if uh, we're already something else to each other in our next life? Uh, what do you think we are then? And Nora just looks at her and says, I don't know. And he's like, I don't know either, but I'll see you then. And then he gets in the Uber and leaves. And Nora kind of like lingers there, waits. She's clearly processing some stuff, some emotions. Turns and like walks back to her, her house and her husband and her life there. And again, you get this long tracking shot as she is just walking back. And when she gets there, Arthur is sitting on the stairs, kind of not judgingly. I think he's he's... You first think like maybe it's judging, but it is definitely not because it's Arthur. He's a very understanding person. He's sitting there. He sees his wife, uh, pull you know, walk up. He opens the gate for her, and when she, when he opens the gate for her, when she kind of walks in, she starts crying. And Arthur just gives her a hug, and he gives her a hug. He says it's okay. Like he clearly understands how much this has affected her, and like how difficult this whole encounter was. I love that he is just fully supportive. He's not, like, blaming her. He clearly is not, like, judging her for doing any of this. He is just there to kind of, like, support her and give her what she needs to kind of, like, process these emotions that are going through her. And that's the end of the movie. That is Past Lives. Like I said, it is a beautiful film. I love the way that this ended. I love the way that Nora, you know, recognized what she had in life and, like, where the choices came and didn't, like, throw that away. It would be very kind of Hollywood if she, like, threw it away and, like, moved to Korea but that wasn't her life that's not the life that she kind of chose and that's not the life that developed here and and in the end like her and Sung had this moment they're able to kind of like come to terms with the feelings that they had for each other but also understand that that's just not how their life this time ended up and maybe in some future life it'll be different but not this time so that is past lives it's coming to a wider release of theaters on june 9th 2023 definitely check it out it is a beautiful film it's, it's definitely going to make you connect with these characters and possibly evaluate some aspects of your own life so thanks so much for watching if you like this review please like and subscribe to this channel it helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you thank you